Oh boy, oh boy, what is that title? The Hanukkah Hoax? Notice the question mark, because we are going to test this new feast added to the Bible. Why is there no mention of it in Scripture, ever? Oh, we know we're told once, but we'll open with that right away, and we'll test it. The Bible establishes seven feasts annually. There were other occasions, however, though not rising to the level of the seven feasts. But did any ever include this December event called Hanukkah, the Festival of Lights? Let's see what the Word says, as well as true history, even from the very Levite temple priests who were exiled from the temple in this story's continuation fact. That history is there, though largely untold and ignored, but very valid, and no longer ignored now. It's time to resolve the doctrines of men. Get ready for a massive revelation every believer should know. Messianic pulpits following Judaism immediately go to this one and only verse— John 10, 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter. And Yahushua walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Now, it is fact that this word dedication in Hebrew is the word Hanukkah. That's true. Then we are told, see, Hanukkah's in the Bible. Well, yes, Hanukkah, or the word dedication in English, is in the Bible 11 times, and dedicated another 24 or so. You could look at it other ways as well. But typically, it refers to the temple, especially dedication itself. And it even has, we'll show you, a feast to commemorate it. It does. But it's not one of the seven, but it is an historical marker nonetheless. But on what date, and does it match the celebration called Hanukkah or dedication? Well, here's what we know so far. This scripture only says it was winter. Messiah is where? He's in the temple at the feast of dedication. Dedication of what? Dedication of the temple. Well, which one, right? There were two. It's the second one. And that's the one still standing, which he's standing in at that point. Is the Bible really silent, though, on when the first and second temples were completed and dedicated? Really? One would have to believe that and then ignore Scripture completely in order to arrive at December as the date of Hanukkah, or dedication, the Feast of Dedication from the Bible. But see, the Bible's not silent on this at all. Again, this is the Feast of Dedication in which Messiah was in the Temple. It's the dedication of the Temple. The Temple was commemorated basically at its completion. Now, we know there were two temples, so do either of these dates jive with this claim of December? That's the real point. The first temple was dedicated about 950 B.C., so let's cover that quickly, in Kings and Chronicles, both on the Feast of Tabernacles in the seventh month, or Ethanim. During that biblical feast, thus, it's not a separate feast. This is about late September or early October. And by the way, the temple, the first temple, is still celebrated in that feast to this day, or at least it should be. Now, that's not December, is it? Not even really near it. But the first temple was destroyed by Babylon, or actually, First Esdras says, the Edomites burned it down. Oh, now that's another video. When the southern kingdom returned from Babylon, Ezra records, wait a minute, that's in the Bible canon, isn't it? So, let's be clear, this date has been there all along, and it is only willing ignorance which moves to another date ignoring this one. It's all that it could be, or perhaps 
a completely false story, which we will deal with. In Ezra 6, the second temple was completed and dedicated on the 3rd of Adar, which is the 12th Hebrew month. Not December. No, 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 no. It's late February, early March. The Hebrew year does not match the Roman year. The beginning of the Hebrew year, Abib 1, is basically uh, late March, essentially, mid to late March. So there's just no fittingness. It just doesn't work. And come on, they know this. They just simply ignore it. The book of First Ezra is also written by Ezra, but a second witness here from the 1611 King James, notice the old English there, says the date was Adar 23. But no matter, it's Adar, which is not December. It's late February to early March. It just doesn't work. The second temple was completed according to Ezra the prophet, a Levite, whose lineage was exiled to Qumran, mind you. Hello, we're telling that history from his people, yet again, continuing his story, which is the way it should be. So, the temple priests, not Maccabees, which they rejected as the sons of darkness. That's what they say many times over, and they have nothing but Pretty bad names to call them as the basically source of evil uh, among mankind in large degree. He places it in Adar in 515 BC, pretty much. Now that's late February, early March, or in the winter, as John 10 says, matching it completely. But now we know John 10 is not talking about December. Doesn't work. The Feast of Dedication, or Hanukkah was celebrated in the Bible, and it's right there for all to see. It is not December, nor did it or could it change. Now, this is what Messiah was doing in the temple for the feast, commemorating the second temple. Did the Hasmoneans rebuild the second temple? No. Was there a third temple? No. Therefore, this date doesn't change. You don't rededicate the temple, which is still standing. That's illiterate. Now notice, he did not hang out there much, and that is because the son of Yahuwah from heaven, well, he was not welcome there in a defiled temple already. Why do you think he calls them hypocrites, brood of vipers, seed of Satan, the synagogue of Satan? Hello, How is it that we don't read what he said of all things? There's even that guy out there. Jesus' words only, which is pretty ignorant because it means even throw out most of the Gospels because, well, they're not all his words. But even if you just did that, do you at least believe the words of Messiah himself? Or would you rather just take the words of conquerors of the temple who defiled it? Hmm. Oh, did that happen? We'll show you. Now, even within those walls, those defiled walls, they plotted to have him killed and even found the perfect, sinless son of Yahuwah guilty of breaking their twisted Talmudic law, which is the opposite of Torah. So he said, if you believe him, in Mark 7. Again, whose word do we take? Should always be Messiah's overall, right? Even over Paul. So, Then they'll lie and tell you. Well, the Hasmoneans, well, they rededicated the temple. And, well, they moved it to December, to a pagan holiday, which I'll show you. Okay, please produce one scripture in which Yahusha, you know, the son of Yahuwah, endorses such. He doesn't. Didn't happen. Not one time in the entire New Testament, in fact. And Paul was a Pharisee prior. So he well knew the traditions of the Pharisees, yet he never writes of keeping a Hanukkah feast in December. Never mentions this story of light. Never mentions the eight days, nor the miracle oil that lasted far beyond its visa, which is an embellishment added centuries later anyway. Not even found in Maccabees for that matter. 
he would have rebuked it if he did. But there was nothing to rebuke because the modern Hanukkah was manufactured far later based on the Festival of Light, an occult festival from Persia. Just as this cult of Persia infused the worship of Yahuwah into their gods in 2 Kings 17. Read it. And this is what they installed in the temple, defiling it as well. Again, please produce any verse which says such in actual scripture that condones what they did. It doesn't exist. The Greeks did not defile the temple. There's no scripture on that either. Thus, no need to rededicate it. And kicking out the Aaronic Levite temple priests over a thousand years of precedence as the keepers of the temple and the practice and scripture, that's not a rededication of the temple. It's called theft. And any ceremony from there forward is illegitimate and illegal in Bible terms, period. There's nothing to discuss. There's nothing to debate. Again, we cover this in detail in Who Defiled the Temple. But here again is the history written by the temple priests who were exiled to Qumran by the Hasmoneans and Pharisees in their infrastructure. So let's have a quick look. In their commentary on Nahum, the exiled Levite temple priests, those like Ezra, essentially, Again, he was 400 BC, but still the same, cut from the same cloth. They record this history, interpreted their interpretation of this passage in Nahum by the temple priest, mind you. This concerns Demetrius, king of Greece, who sought on the counsel of those who seek smooth things to enter Jerusalem. Now, we cover and connect these who seek smooth things are the Pharisees and Hasmoneans. Watch that video, and we'll show you. The temple system, essentially, at this time, which was illegitimate and illegal biblically and remains so today as we call it Judaism. That's what Judaism is. It's not a biblical endorsed religion. It's the opposite. It's rebuked in the Bible many times by Messiah himself. Now, keep reading. But Elohim did not permit the city to be delivered into the hands of the kings of Greece. Now, it's talking about in war and complete utter control. Do they pay taxes to Greece? Yet, yeah. Yes, they did. Were they part of the Greek empire? Yes, they were, just as they were part of the Persian empire before. But no war, no battles. It was a peaceful takeover. And Greece did not force its ways on Jerusalem. It didn't happen. That is a lie. Keep it up, and we'll see even the time frame. From the time of Antiochus, now we know who he is. There's an Antiochus I, about 60 or so years after uh, Alexander the Great. Uh, and then there's Antiochus the Fourth, I believe, Epiphanes. Okay, he's the one that supposedly defiled the temple, but see, this covers that period. So, no, he didn't, according to the temple priests. So, until the coming of the rulers of the Katim, which is Rome, that's what they call Rome. Katim is one of the, I believe, grandsons of Japheth. So, makes sense that they would call him that. But then... She shall be trampled under their feet. Now, in other words, the narrative in Maccabees is a lie. The Greeks did not defile the temple, nor even war in Jerusalem. Thus, there is no need for a rededication. Thus, no Hanukkah in December, period. Again, watch who defiled the temple, where we deal with this in detail. So, this reports historically the Greeks, including Antiochus, even the fourth, even Epiphanes, did not defile the temple and did not attack Jerusalem. It was peaceful. So, who did defile the temple then? By the way, we cover uh, even uh, Demetrius uh, in the history there too, so go watch. Wouldn't you know, they tell us this too. Yet, 
ignored by those that are supposedly scholars of the Dead Sea Scrolls. They're stupid. They ignore this, and they cannot any longer. The Levite temple priests reveal this in their commentary on Habakkuk. Again, valid, recorded, History written by exiled temple priests found dated in archaeology to the first century AD. This is of far greater value than any Pharisee writing period because these are the temple priests. They're the ones who have the authority. No Pharisee ever did. They stole it. For the violence done to Lebanon, this is from Habakkuk shall overwhelm you, and the destruction of the beast shall terrify you. See, this has come true already back in that era, and you'll see. Because of the blood of men and the violence done to the land, the city, and all its inhabitants. What does this mean? Interpret it by the temple priests. This saying concerns the wicked priest. Now, who is that? Even Giza Verms, who we're reading from and many others, recognize this is a reference to the Hasmoneans. No, not just one priest. Some of them try that, which is just utter ignorance. The whole lot of them, all Hasmoneans, period. As they call them, the sons of darkness, not sun, singular. They call them those, that's plural, who seek smooth things. And we deal with that in Who Defiled the Temple in more detail. Watch it. Inasmuch as he shall be paid the reward which he himself tendered to the poor. For Lebanon. Now that's where? That's the Samaritans. This is saying, identifying the Hasmoneans with the Samaritans. The wicked priests, the Hasmoneans, came from Lebanon, Samaria. Because they are. So, for Lebanon is the council of the community. Now, that's in this passage. And the beasts in this passage, in prophecy, are the simple of Yehuda who keep the law. See, this has already come to pass at this point in history. The temple priests whom they exiled. As he himself plotted the destruction of the poor. Now, they're talking about the temple priests and the true followers who made themselves poor for Yahuwah. So will Elohim condemn him to destruction. Indeed. And they talk about this much more than this one passage. It is all over the Dead Sea Scrolls. You you, You trip over it all over the place, yet these scholars write and write and write and write, and they're just so ridiculous that they can't see what's right in front of their nose because they live in a paradigm that obscures this to the point where they have a veil. They can't even see it, even though it's in plain English, and you can see it for yourself. That's the actual fragment. As And as for that which he said, Habakkuk further reads, because of the blood of the city and the violence done to the land, interpreted by the temple priests, the city is Jerusalem. So we know where we're talking about here, where the wicked priests, who's that? The Hasmoneans, committed abominable deeds. And, oh, wait, wait, what did he do? What did the wicked priests do? Well, who defiled the temple? Defiled the temple of Elohim. There it is. He did. It's right there in writing, in history, well documented to the first century AD. This is the best history possible, and yet ignored. Did Greece defile the temple? No, that's a lie. The very breed who fraudulently controlled the Qumran narrative, lying about the Dead Sea Scrolls, we've caught them many times, we've exposed them already. They lie about what is and what is not scripture. They have no authority to choose what is and what is not. We found the library of those who did have the authority and were the keepers, and that library is called Bible. Now, the very ones that are condemned 
in these writings. How about that? Pharisees are the priest structure, along with Sadducees and scribes, Samaritan scribes, not Bible ones, mind you. They are the replacements of the northern kingdom in Samaria, who conquered Yahudia and the temple in 165 BC, and they defiled the temple, not the Greeks. This is history, real, documented history, not made up. This is fact dated to the 1st century A.D. Finally, where Habakkuk says, the violence done to the land. Now, these temple priests, again, tell us how to read this in prophecy, in understanding, in interpretation. These are the cities of Yehuda where he robbed the poor of their possessions. So, he didn't just take over the temple. He robbed the people. And that practice is happening to this day by the very same lineages. Wow. The Hasmonean revolt was the defiling of the temple, never the Greeks. It was the conquest of Yahudia. And this is the origin of the modern Hanukkah celebration, not the Bible. And not Yahuwah, who hates this feast and rejects it. It is not his, but the defiling of his temple and the justification used for the conquest of Yehudia and the temple, it's a lie. The Greeks were not forcing Hellenism. It is the Hasmoneans who actually do so in practice because they're the Hellenists. Just look at their own identification on their own coins. We cover that in other videos in the Lost Tribe series. Their coins are full of such symbols because that is their own practice. What hypocrites! But that is no mystery because Messiah called them so. Hypocrites all. They were never followers of the Bible. How exactly can any Messianic or Jew repeat with a straight face this lie? Again, Peter called it willing ignorance, because no logic could possibly progress in this direction. But this is also known as the Festival of Lights, right? Now, they light the menorah. What could possibly be wrong with lighting candles and the menorah? I mean, the menorah... That's biblical, right? That's from the temple. Well, yes, the menorah is in the temple in Scripture. However, it was defiled at the time of the Hasmonean conquest, thus of no value moving forward. And it continues to be defiled every year, and sometimes by many, many times, in this holiday called Hanukkah in fraud. That's not Scripture. But the opposite, just like Mark 7 warned us the Pharisees represent. Well, this festival of lights, by the admission of the rabbis even, I mean, come on, they come right out and tell us these things. It's also not of biblical root. But a Persian religious practice, which makes sense, because that is their infusion according to 2 Kings 17, all the same. And that is the religion called Judaism today which is only rebuked in Scripture. Yahuwah hates it. Reading from my Jewish learning. Yep, this is their words, not ours. Link at the bottom. There is a great deal of evidence that in much of the Eastern Mediterranean and the Middle East, the winter solstice was a time for imploring the sunlight to return and celebrating its readiness to do so. Now, is that a Bible practice? Never. In Rome, the 25th of December hmm, was the birthday of Jesus? Oh, no, 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 no. What's that? Of the unconquerable sun. It fails to mention that's the god called Mithra, the sun god, also known as Tammuz, who is rebuked in Jeremiah. What an idiot scholar, yet again, playing along with willing ignorance, blah, 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 blah. I'm an occult idiot. <laughs> That's what he's really saying. Okay, check this out. In Persia, at the winter solstice, the common people set great bonfires. Oh, so great. And their rulers sent birds aloft bearing torches of dried grass. Oh, it's such an, a beautiful occult Blah. Nonsense. Persia and Rome, why? 
This is the Persian religion, which Constantine the Great was high priest of Mithraism. That's the god being worshipped here, Mithra, the sun god of the unconquerable sun. That's him, even in Rome, but he came from Persia all the same. He's a Nephilim god. He was not a Catholic, by the way, not Constantine. Uh, in many accounts, not until his deathbed confession did he become Catholic. He infused Mithraism, which is what he would do as high priest of Mithraism, a Persian religion, and he did it with the Bible, and Judaism has done the same in Samaria since 2 Kings 17, which is why they worship Ashima, Hashem, same etymology. They still worship the same gods. It hasn't even changed. And they put it right in front of our nose. And we just ignore it. They even continue the Samaritan practice of not pronouncing the name of their god. Of course, their god is not Yahuwah. So why would they use his name? They removed it from the name of his people even, not to mention scripture over 6,800 times. That is abominable. But his people are never Jews. That's not even Hebrew. They're Yahs, which is short for Yahudim, the actual Hebrew word in pronunciation. Who would take his name off theirs? Those who are not his. That's who. Neither are biblical, uh, neither are the biblical relationship even with Yahuwah and Yahusha. We are told in Scripture to observe. It is a short leap to surmising that the Syrian Greeks may have chosen the 25th of Kislev as a time to desecrate the temple by making their own sacrifices there precisely. Of course, that didn't happen, that's a lie. Because it was a time of solar and lunar darkness, the time of the winter solstice and the waning of the moon. Well, then why do you still celebrate it? Come on, think. And it is a short leap to surmise, here's what he thinks, that the Maccabees, when they took the anniversary of that day as the day of rededication, that's stupid. That is because the Hasmoneans, or Maccabees, already observed this Persian, Persian religion since they replaced the northern kingdom in Samaria. They are the impostors, the replacements, the infiltrators who infuse Yahuwah's religion into theirs and they mess it up. They do not represent the Bible, but the opposite. And here it goes on. They were rededicating not only the temple, but the day itself to Jewish holiness. Because the best Jewish holiness day is the day of the sun god in scripture, of course. Where? Nowhere. This is stupid. It is ignorant. This guy is no scholar. He is an agitating, absolute deceiver. This is a lie. Now, we're capturing a pagan solstice festival. Oh, just touches your heart, doesn't it? No. Yahuwah hates it. That had won wide support among partially Hellenized Jews. Well, why rebuke them and get them to come out of Hellenization? Just join them. Because that's what the Bible says, right? Where? Nowhere in order to make it a day of God's victory over paganism. Stupid. Never. That is not scripture. Is that how Yahuwah ever operates? The Pope did this too. He Christianized pagan festivals. Oh, it's now Christianized. Oh, we can still keep our pagan festival and not be condemned. Uh, is that how the Bible works? Yeah, the Bible says to do that where? Never. Not once. Ever. It always says the opposite. Read Jeremiah 10 and notice the Christmas tree especially is called out, called pagan, and Jeremiah doesn't try to assimilate and make it his worship, but warns us all to rebuke it and stay away. And he calls them some very strong language, such as fools. I know we use that word and it's unbiblical, yet it's in the Bible many times. People just aren't reading. 
Even the lighting of the candles for Hanukkah fits the context of the surrounding torchlight honors for this sun. He just completely damned the festival. Exactly. It's sun worship, not Bible. They are defiling the menorah. That is what they're doing, and it's despicable. The menorah represents, according to Zechariah, the menorah represents the seven eyes of Yahuwah, according to him. Uh, I believe it's Zechariah 4. I think it's 1 through 10. As he is all-knowing and everywhere, omnipresent. Notice that is not part of their story either. Defiling him and using his system of worship is filthy, disgusting. Now, is it a coincidence that Catholicism chooses December 25th, the end of Saturnalia in Rome, which was taking place at the time of Messiah even, in sun worship, as now they call it Christmas? having something to do with Messiah when it's the exact opposite time of the the year from his birth? No, not at all. They and Judaism share the same origin, the same religion from Persia, and you see it infused throughout. Neither are biblical even from their root, and both are an infusion of the worship of Yahuwah into their worship, their Persian worship, in order to appear as something they are not. See, they say they are Yahudim, but are not, but do lie. Revelation 2, 9 and 3, 9. They're still operating that way, uh, according to Messiah, in the last days for 2,000 years, and they're easy to find if we look for them. But that is their foundation, not the Bible. Yahuwah has always rejected such infusion, and Christmas is just as bad as this holiday. And by the way, whose pockets are you lining when you buy your pagan presents? Well, the same Maccabees, Hasmoneans, Pharisees, the same money changers. Messiah turned over the temple tables to rebuke. No wonder they love Christmas, even though it's not Jewish. So is the Festival of Lights, the modern Hanukkah, in December, a hoax? You better believe it is. It is a fraudulent history written by the conquerors of the temple, who stole it and defiled it. Absolutely disgusting. This festival is their celebration of their evil acts, according to the temple priest, whom they exiled illegally and stole from. It is time we all awaken to these things once and for all and speak out against such ill-contrived, illiterate evil, such as modern Israel and Zionism represents the land of Gog of Magog, the spiritual Sodom and Egypt, according to Revelation 11, who is the seat of the harlot of Babylon, which is why you find her worship there, even though named differently. It's the same. Come out of her, my people. Don't we know that the beast will rule from Jerusalem? Are we not reading Restore his worship and his ways. We hope you have learned something once again as we resolve the doctrines of men. Yah bless to everyone.